Here's the problem that we're gonna tackle in this video. I am constantly in need of a way to charge or power USB devices. Like, for example, my phone is almost dead, I'm out flying somewhere, it's gonna go dead, I need to top it off. Or maybe I've got a soldering iron like this one, and yes, it can take power from USB. There are all kinds of things that you can run or charge off of USB. And this is the part of the video where you go, Bardwell, just go buy a USB power bank. There's a zillion of them on Amazon. But number one, the big ones are kind of expensive, especially if you want one that can do USB power delivery, quick charging, whatever it is, the price Okay, the price is pretty reasonable, but when you look at how many actual milliamp hours, how many actual watt hours you get, you go, God, it's too much, especially because I have a whole bunch of gigantic batteries. So when I could just have this, I've already got this with me. Why would I bring a USB power bank that's no good for anything else when I have a buttload of LiPos? So what I want, and what I'm gonna show you in this video is something that I can plug into my normal LiPos and use it to charge my phone and do all that stuff and not have to buy a useless USB power bank that is a one trick pony and charges me too much freaking money. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna learn something today. The first solution we're gonna look at is the Speedy B USB power adapter. And this thing has a couple features that until recently made it my absolute favorite device, but it actually has a flaw that made me recently stop using it. So let's talk about the good. It can take from three to six S input. That's pretty typical. And if we plug it in, turn it around so it's right side up, we can see it shows the input voltage, 25.3 volts. And if I press this button, it will scroll through the volts, the amps, and that's it. It'll show you how many volts and amps you're outputting. And if you're thinking, well, USB output, isn't that just five volts? No, not if you're doing quick charging or power delivery, it can go up to, I think it could go up to like 25 volts or maybe higher. I don't know what the actual maximum currently is. This one doesn't go that high, I don't think. But if we just plug in a USB cable and then plug in some device, see my phone makes the sound, it is super fast charging, that's good. And if we look here, we can see the volts are going to nine volts. Oh, what is it doing? Nine volts, zero volts. Nine volts, zero volts. Uh, yeah. This is the thing that made me stop using this. I swear this used to work with my phone. I don't know if my phone changed or if something about this changed, but this no longer charges. This is a Samsung S24. It no longer charges the phone. Like right now, the phone says that it's charging, but it's not. Charging, 12 minutes until full. It's not charging. And if we look here, it just keeps going one, one amp, 1.6 amps, zero amps. And it just keeps going from nine volts to zero volts. And eventually the phone says it's not charging. Uh, I don't know why that is. I asked Speedy B and they said, sometimes there's an incompatibility between the charging methods supported by your phone and the device. But basically this is no good to me. And it's a shame because it has a couple of really nice tricks if it works. So first of all, uh, in order to keep from killing your battery, if you long press this button, you can change the cutoff voltage. So 12 volts, 15, 18, et cetera. You set the cutoff voltage, and when the input voltage goes below that number, it will shut off and it won't kill your battery. That's nice because V1 of this adapter would start flashing the screen, not beeping. Maybe it would beep, I don't think it would beep. I killed a lot of batteries with V1 of this thing because it would just run them dead. It's really nice that they've done this and it's easy to adjust and in addition, I don't have this here, but this comes with a USB to barrel plug adapter that you can use to char power. Well, basically it's for the DJI Goggles 2 and the Goggles Integra. Goggles that don't take a 6S input natively, it'll output nine volts over a barrel plug. You can buy that with it and that's pretty freaking cool. Although most goggles these days take up to 6S and so you might not really need that. Speed to be adapter, very promising. Won't charge my phone, useless. Let's try a couple other things. Will it run the soldering iron? Low voltage, 9.2. Nope, won't run the soldering iron. Apparently it doesn't do like USB PD. Will it run the V-Fly Whoop Store? This is a 1S uh, Tiny Whoop battery charger. Oops, I said Tiny Whoop, TM. It will, it will run this and well, seems like it's working. Let me get some batteries. Let's start charging them. Oh, it's only charging at 0.5 amps. No, 
Oh, interesting. This is maxing at 0 0.6 amps. I think it goes up to 1 point something amps normally. That's got to be because the input voltage is too low. All right, well, here we go. 0 0.6 amps. And away we go. So we're outputting 9 volts and 1.2 amps. We're cranking away. It seems like this will work just fine. If you're wondering about whether it will overheat and shut down if we were to run it at that output continuously, I will say I have run this, I've run my HC0 goggles on this literally all day, like six hours continuously. Uh, and it got a little hot, but it ran fine and had no problems whatsoever. Okay, so that would be the winner. This video would just be about the SpeedDB adapter and I would say go buy it and stop there, except that it doesn't charge my phone. So, next up. And next up we have something that is almost the same as the SpeedyB adapter, the AO Coda 25 watt PD 3.0 and Quick Charge 3.0 charger. Uh, it takes seven to 27 volts, so a little bit lower input voltage. The SpeedyB only goes to 3S, this goes down to 2S-ish. Uh, and if we plug it in, we can see it's got a little bit of a confusing readout here. Um, input voltage, input limit, output voltage, output current, output, I don't know what that means. Uh, and six cells, 24 volts, 4.98, there's a button here on the back, short press button to input voltage protect, long press button power supply mode. So if I just, I can change the cutoff voltage here. Unfortunately, it does not remember the cutoff voltage between power cycles. So if I turn this down to whatever 18 volts, because I'm using a, a lithium ion, then I unplug it and plug it back in again, it forgets. It's kind of annoying. The SpeedyB remembers. SpeedyB would be so good, it would be perfect if it actually worked. Uh, and then you can see it's outputting five volts, but if we just plug in here and plug into my phone, the phone does show super fast charging. That's good. And here we can see nine volts output, 2.3 amps. We're cranking away, 18 watts. Great, super fast charging. That's that's the fastest my phone will do. So this thing actually works, yay. On the underside, you can also see it says long press button power supply mode. And uh, at first I thought that meant that this would act as a power supply and just output like nine volts DC or something. That is not the case. Uh, if you long press, it basically just disables the low voltage cutoff. You can change it to DC input, and that means it's getting powered like from a from a DC power supply plugged into the wall, and you don't need a low voltage threshold. So BAT means you have a low voltage threshold, DC means you don't have a low voltage threshold. Except I can change the low voltage threshold even though I'm in DC mode, so I'm not really sure. Maybe the threshold is still there, but it just ignores it, I don't know. Okay, so this is the current winner. And in fact, this is the current thing that I use the most in order to charge my phone. Oh, uh, what about the whoop charger? What are we doing? Will it run? Yes, it will. 0 0.6 amps. Will it go higher? 0 0.7, 8, uh, 0 0.8 amps. Okay, so the charger will go a little bit higher on this one, and it is outputting 12 volts. That's why. So it is doing a little better than the run cam. Outputting a higher voltage and therefore presumably higher wattage. And away we go. 12 volts. It's ramping up. 0 0.8. How about the soldering iron? Nope, low voltage. I think the soldering iron needs minimum 19 volts. So this Aocoda is currently my go-to when I know I'm going to be somewhere where I got to charge my phone or something like that, and I just want to grab a flight pack and know I'm going to be good to go. Uh, but there, I did buy a couple other things that you may like better, even though they weren't the ones that I landed on. Uh, one of them, I actually made my own USB power bank, uh, but I'll get to that one last. Here's the next one. This is an XT60 to USB-C power adapter. It's basically the same as the two things we've seen before, but it doesn't have a screen. And critically, it doesn't have a low voltage cutoff. So you're gonna need to find some other way to monitor the voltage of your battery, or you're gonna kill it. Um, uh, and, oh, by the way, Look here, it outputs up to 20 volts, uh, but there's a gotcha there, and that is that the input voltage has to be higher 
than the output voltage. So if you're running a, even if you're running a 6S LiPo, it can get down pretty close to 20 volts. And if you're running anything lower, it's gonna be well below 20 volts. But this is a 6S LiPo. So if we plug this in, first of all, how the hell am I gonna plug this into my phone? Yes, I could just plug this in, but what I like to do is buy an extension cable so that I can not have to plug this big chunky thing directly into my phone. This is fast charging, but not super fast charging. That's interesting. Fast charging. What output voltage is it outputting? I don't know. Is it outputting 20 volts? I don't know. It doesn't tell me. Charging, 18 minutes until full. Yeah, with fast charging, it was 12 minutes until full. So that's interesting. Is it the cable? Is the cable screwing me up? Fast charging, no, it's not. Okay, uh, what if we do the whoop store? Uh, it's not powering on at all. That's silly. Are you joking? We do the soldering iron. Did the battery die? No, it was like 25 volts. 25 volts. Shouldn't believe in this battery fully charged. It's not good. Okay. Well, that's too bad. Hang on, I got another one. Is this one broken? No. That one doesn't work either. Dang. Okay. It's hardly a ringing endorsement. I don't know what's going on there. Hundred. It says it's rated for 100 watts, up to 20 volts. This thing's outputting 24 volts, so there should be no issue. And yet, it is not outputting what it ought to be outputting. So, uh, I guess I can't really recommend it. Darn. Cool. Glad I'm doing this test. Here's the, uh, the final thing in this roundup, which is in some ways the coolest. This little circuit board is a USB PD adapter. And it says it's rated up to 65 watts. I am a little skeptical of that because I think this thing's gonna get freaking hot if it's actually running 65 watts. The other thing is that it does need, it takes up to 30 volts input, but again, the input voltage has to be higher than the output. So if you're running it off a 4S battery, it's never gonna output 20, 20 volts and it's never gonna get the full 65 watts, USB has to output 20 volts to get the higher wattages or higher voltages to get higher wattages. So um, nevertheless, it's pretty freaking cool because all you do is you wire it to an input, right? Uh, input voltage up to 30 volts and then boom, USB comes out the other side. Uh, and I have made my own USB power bank in a way by taking this 21700 battery pack that I made, 5,000 milliamp hours, 21,700. And I have just kind of like alien taped this board on there and done some wiring on the inside that you can't see. And as a result, boom, we plug in here. Ta-da! And we plug in here. And super fast charging. 12 minutes until full, yes. And... Bada bing. Uh, once again, it'll only go up to 0 0.8 amps. That suggests we're at 12 volts. And that's probably because this battery pack is only at 16 volts. So if this was a 6S battery, we might could get a higher voltage out of there. So we're not going to get the full 65 watts, but there we go. And nope, still low voltage on the secure soldering iron because it needs a higher voltage. Oh, well. Um, and, and also, there's no low voltage cutoff on this. So again, I will kill this battery if I'm not paying attention. I need a way to monitor the voltage. I actually, hang on, I'll show you what I use. I actually like to use these. Uh, this is what we used to use to see, tell us when we had to stop flying back before we had telemetry and on-screen display to let us monitor our battery voltage. We would put one of these on our drone and go fly around until it started beeping at us. I am not making that up and I am not joking. That's how bad we had it, kids. And these days, let's see if I remember how to plug this in. Uh, there we go. Ah, it's very loud. And basically, it just shows your cell voltage, and then it's got a button here where you can change the low voltage cutoff, which is currently, you can see, set to 2.8 volts, because this is, again, a lithium-ion battery, so it can go lower. Um, what you would do is you would just leave this plugged in, and then when you were about to kill your battery, it would start beeping at you. It's a little cumbersome, but that's why, for me... For me, the ultimate solution is this guy. It's got a low voltage cutoff. It does super fast charging. Uh, and about the only complaint about, I have about it is number one, its size is a little bigger than I would ideally prefer it to be, but I can deal with it. And number two, 
the fact that it doesn't remember the low voltage cutoff when you first plug it in. Although with the SpeedyB, you can get in a situation where like you've set this at 2.5 volts or 2.8 volts because you're gonna run it on a lithium ion and then you plug it into a LiPo and you don't remember to check and then it kills the LiPo. So whereas with the Aokoda, since it forgets, you're probably gonna go back and check on every time you plug it in. So I don't know, maybe they turn that negative into a positive. I got links to all of this stuff in the video description below if you wanna pick up any of it. And there are affiliate links. Uh, well, some of them are. Not all of these come from affiliated stores. Uh, affiliate link means that you click the link and then any purchase you make I get a little bit of a commission. It's a great way for you to support the channel is if you just find the affiliate links in the description of my videos and click them, you can even bookmark them. And anytime you go shop at the store, you just give me a little commission on whatever you buy. It's a nice thing to do. Uh, I'm not gonna put this in because it apparently doesn't work. Go figure. Uh, and if you are interested in building a 21700 battery pack, just like I did. This is also a great way to save money. These cells are like $6 a piece. So that's four cells, that's 25-ish dollars in cells. And another, let's say $10 in miscellaneous other stuff. This is a 5,000 milliamp hour 4S battery pack. That's, you're, that's so much better value than any USB power bank that you would buy off of. Amazon. Go look at how many, don't look at the amp milliamp hours because milliamp hours are usually at 1S voltage. This is at 4S voltage. So um, great. If you want to, I'll put a card on screen and a link in the video description below to the video where I built this and you can, uh, you can follow along and see how I did it. See you there.